All right. So as you know, we can write the probability of going from state i to j in two steps to be just the sum of this x2 equal to j conditioned on x1 equal to k and x0 initial state is i times the probability x1 is k, x0 is i, and we can write it as pik times pkj. So, so this, this term is the ij term of transition matrix with itself. So we call it uh, p squared. And uh, when we say the second step, two-step, two-step transition probability, I mean pij squared, we mean just elements of this p squared matrix. And in, in general, we can write the any step, pij, pij any step probability from going to i to j to be the sum over probability of xn becomes j in step n and uh, condition on xn minus 1 is sum k and it goes over this k. So the sum is over the k. X, xn minus 1 equal to k condition on x0 is i. And we can write it as pik n minus 1 pkj. So in general, the chapman coma growth, we can say that pm plus n is equal to pm, m's power of transition probability times the n's power. And uh, I mean, by that, I mean pij m plus n equals to sum over k pik m pkj n. So these are very basic things from transition probabilities in Markov chains. But what is important for, for us, for mathematicians, for computer scientists, for uh, randomized algorithm developers for many different people with many different backgrounds is the convergence of Pn. So we want to know whether this Pij, when you just multiply it n times, is just, it converges to P, to pi. And this is just the only function of J and so, uh, so it becomes indifferent uh, that from which node we reach node J. For example, this click and this click, after some time, for example, you go here, you go here, you go here, and after some time, you, you reach all states. So after some time, big time, so you are indifferent from uh, where you started, you may have started from, from this point, from this point, or you may have started from this point to reach this point. And so after some time, you may, be, you may become indifferent to where you have started. And, and that is interesting because it shows the connectivity of the graph. For example, we want the graphs for example, in computer science, you, you talk about many sparse cuts. And in the optimum case, for example, you are talking about K cuts. You have K, for example, three cuts. And you want, uh, you want very good mixing in this area, very good mixing in this area, in each cluster, very good mixing. And we know that these are some bottlenecks that avoid this, uh, this beautiful idea that uh, nodes in a cluster are, are, 
are very good, uh, very are mixed uh, very efficiently and in a very small time. And so this idea uh, is, as you see, it is important in clustering, I mean, graph partitioning in many different, uh, in many different uh, problems. So that's why this is the intuition and motivation behind all of these things if you're a computer scientist or, or even a mathematician. So your pi, uh, so, so we want to, the limit of pign to be pj when n goes to infinity. So if, if this limit exists, we can just multiply both sides by pjk. So pijn, we multiply by pjk. As I said, we multiply both sides by pjk. So until now, everything is crystal clear. And then this part is just a limit of pik n plus 1. And I, I just and I described it. So it so it is it will go to pi k when n goes to infinity. And so pi k is equal to pi j p j k. And uh, you know that uh, in general. For example, uh, you may be interested in to define P to be D minus A, where A is your adjacency and D is your AIK. So we like to normalize like this. So every, anybody uh, could use a different uh, transition probability. Some people use with Laplacian different forms of normalization. But at the end of the day, you have one matrix that you are interested in the long time behavior of that mixing and covering time and heating time, blanket time, and many different uh, variables that are important to, to, uh, to characterize the geometry of that random walk. And uh, as you know, your pi j, I mean, your stationary distribution is a degree of j over two times number of edges, which is m. And these are many elementary things that everybody knows. And what is interesting is a theorem that says that an ergodic finite state Markov chain, having, for example, transition matrix p, and for any j, so for any j, the maximum of pi p to the n i j is non-increasing in n. And also minimum of uh, p i j to the n is non-decreasing in n. And the limit of maximum Pijn is just the limit of minimum of Pijn. So this is a very elementary theorem. And so this lim max is lim min. So it converges to pi j with exponential convergence in n. So to prove this theorem, we need a couple of... Uh, lemmas, but, but really the main important lemma that you need to prove this theorem is just this lemma that says if, if, if P is a transition matrix of an arbitrary finite state Markov chain, then for each J, for each J, the maximum Pij is, is non-decreasing and you can prove for mean mean that is non uh, uh, so this is non-increasing 
And you can prove the same thing for minimum. I mean, minimum of PIJ to the N, which is non-decreasing. So because uh, we don't lose anything, so we just prove one of them. For example, the maximum. So we know that So the proof is so simple because we just write PIJ to the N plus 1 which is equal to summation over k, p i k, p k j n, and we just use the property of maximum, and which is p i k over k, and as I said, the property of maximum is maximum is greater than any other things. So this is, we are just using the property of maximum. So this is just maximum of P L J to the N over all L. And we know that it is it cannot increase. We are you are just multiplying something and it, it will not be more than this. And it holds for any states, for all states. And it holds for maximizing I. So so maximum of P I J to the N plus one is less than or equal to maximum of PLJ to the N over all L. And if you just, so we have just proved it. If you just do it for uh, minima, just change everything with for minima, you can, you can, very similarly, you can prove that minimum of PIJ is greater than minimum of PLJN. And Finally, look, you can say that lim max of pij n goes to infinity is equal to lim mean of pij to the n. And all of them goes to pi j. So for just fix, fix one j, then you will see that this happens. You have some undershoot and over, or overshoot. And people, people in control theory like these things very much in nonlinear control, in electrical engineering, these kind of signals. So the limit, limit of maximum, so if, if these are maximums, this one, this one, the limit is non-increasing, non so it decreases. And also the limit of minimums like this, this is non decreasing, so it always increases. And in finally, it converges to pi j. So let's now talk about recurrent things. I mean, when, when we say state i, state i is recurrent, If starting from I and from whenever you can go, there is a way of returning to I. It's like your mind is a mark of chain which is recurrent. For example, you think about, uh, for example, uh, some mathematical idea and then you read some paper and then you see, oh, it is better to look at that from that perspective. Then you think about another thing. So these nodes are, are just your thoughts in your mind. You go from one thought to the other thought. And, and suddenly after 20 years, for example, if you love mathematics, after 20 years, you see that you are, you are reaching all states. And sometimes you go to the initial, you go very close to the initial thought that you had 20 years ago. And it covers all the ideas in mathematics until you become a mathematician. So your mind is like recurrent. And if you are not a clever person, you, for example, you just uh, want to stick to one idea and you don't want to read, you don't want to do research, you don't want even to imagine anything, then you always uh, stay in this area. You cannot go and explore different ideas that different mathematicians like Poincaré, Lebesgue, and other people have had in their mind. So, so you are limited in a very restricted uh, fraction of uh, total states, total state space. And uh, so, 
So if if a state is not recurrent, it's just transient. Because although uh, transient, for example, this state one is transient because you go to two, and then you come back to this. But if you go to three, you can never come back to that. So after a finite time, you can come back to one if you start to one. But after a long time, then it is transient. You cannot, you, you cannot come back to one anymore. And you see this in chaos theory, in complex uh, systems, I mean. In stochastic partial differential equations, in nonlinear control, nonlinear theory of dynamical systems, and uh, so, some for example, you go three and you go to some quasi distribution, and these these states before that are just transient. You will never go less than this uh, this line. For example, if you go upper than this line, you will never go below that. So this is transient. This state is transient because you can you can never come back to this state anymore. You go there and then you never come back. So this state is transient. And you we we see that in different uh, syst dynamical systems. And that's why you like to partition your transition probability. So in general, Markov chains. It is better to reduce the complexity, to understand the Markov chain. It means that you want to decompose it to transient subspace and to recurrent, P of recurrent uh, subspace. And uh, some coupling, we have uh, transient to recurrent. And otherwise, here you have zero because, because for example, when I say ergodic unique chain, it means some ergodic, some ergodic set of states, and you have some transient states. So you start from the transient class, and whenever, when you fall into recurrent class, there is no return. So, ergodic Markov chain, a very important idea. So, it's an irreducible, aperiodic. These are the standard things that you see in uh, many of the, my talks in the future lectures. So, I assume uh, Markov chain is irreducible. It is aperiodic, uh, positive recurrent. Most of the time. So these are standard assumptions, and uh, so this is, if it is if it happens all of these things we call it it is ergodic Markov chain. And uh, you know from basic ideas, basic things, basic definitions that if you sum over j it becomes one, and then so e is just the right eigenvector. And so P minus I is singular. And what I mean by singular, for example, a matrix A is singular. I mean, if you multiply A by V, if and if A1 up to AM, for example, are linearly dependent dependent for example here we are talking about linear algebra and these things but in general the concept of dependence can be generalized in different ways for example Tolag around uh, generalized that independence in his paper uh, some other people like to generalize it by matroids, independent sets, and uh, so it is. So it de it depends on what context you are talking about. So we say that a row vector pi, such that pi b is equal to pi. So pi is the left eigenvector. 
So eigenvalue shows how fast this P